Right, hello everyone. I think we're running now. We're rolling. Yes, seems to be running fine. Hello, I'm Martin from Arturia. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I hope, first of all, that everyone is safe. You know, everyone is well at home or in the studio. And uh, maybe it's a good opportunity for us, to, you know, to, to make even more music um, and um, enjoy as we can this, this difficult period. So I'm, I'm product manager at Arturia for all the audio fuse range and all the FX plugin um, that we develop. Uh, with audio fuse studio available this month, um, I wanted to you know, take this opportunity to quickly review the entire fuse range before having an in-depth look at uh, the audio fuse studio and also have a, also a good glance at uh, the plugins that are uh, included in the AudioFuse Creative Suite, which is uh, provided, offered with um, all the AudioFuse. So let's go. Uh, if you have any question, you know, we'll take a moment at the end uh, of this presentation to answer them. So do not hesitate. You can you know, use the chat, use the video. Um, and if you need more information on this product, we have links below the video where you can find you know all the information on our website directly okay let's start so the audio fuse range is you know consists of uh, the audio fuse which is here um, the audio fuse studio and the audio fuse 8 pre so in two words what will difference them is that the audio fuse is a two uh, preamp plus two line in audio interface the AudioFuse Studio is a four preamp plus four line inputs, audio interface. And the AudioFuse 8 Pre is a rack mounted with eight preamps. OK, let's start with the AudioFuse 8 Pre, actually. Let's, let's have a look quickly. So in a one U rack, here we go. We have um, these fantastic uh, preamps uh, we developed you know, from scratch at Arturia. It took us nearly two or three years to, to develop them. We're really proud of them. And you get eight of these preamps in a single rack unit, um, each of them with direct access to all the preamp function. Uh, input one, two are replicated at the front. So you can actually come and plug in your guitar directly without going at the back. Uh, it will automatically switch from the uh, backside uh, inputs to the front side. Uh, you have a comprehensive you know, monitoring, uh, speaker, phones. Phones, we have two um, uh, TRS size and a source selection and mono button for the speakers. And here you get um, uh, clock selection, sync, and the A button. Uh, a button, actually, this is something you will find on all the audio views. It, it's powering up the unit easily. But it has a little function underneath that it's you can also uh, call back the software to control each of the audio views. So that's really handy. You know, myself, I actually never remember the name of these, you know, um, configuration software. So if you need something quick, you know, just press the button, it pops up on your screen. Uh, that's it. It's a one rack U. As you can see here, I'm using uh, the rack ears uh, to be used on the tabletop, so you can turn the the ears here, it's really handy. We also provide the feet at the back so it, you know, it fits nicely. It's sturdy. You can put your computer or even a big screen on top of it. It's, it's fine. Let's see the back here. So we find our eight uh, preamps inputs. Uh, these are combo TRS XLR. Uh, you can fit in, you know, line. Mic, it will detect automatically. One and two also have um, instrument input. And for the two uh, first input, we have also a symmetrical insert there. Um, also, um, what I can see is uh, the eight output here. So you can eight line output, uh, speaker output, we saw it before, world clock I.O., Double ADAT, so that means that you can keep your 8 channel of ADAT up to 96K. So usually because uh, the, the higher is the sample rate, uh, the more you need some a cable, ADAT cable support 8 channel for up to 48K. But then if you go up to 96K, which the unit supports, then you need two cables here. It's a USB-C audio interface, so we're running uh, USB 2 audio. It's class compliant. 
it's plug and play on every platform. OK, so that was the quick overlook on the APRI. It's a simple product, uh, very efficient. It's fantastic for tracking with these preamps. I will talk about the preamps you know, uh, a bit later on when I'll talk about the AudioFuse Studio, because the important thing is that the all three AudioFuse share the same preamp technology. So we talk about more later. Let's have a look on the AudioFuse 2. So actually, it's come like this. Forgot to put it back for the start. Uh, it's, you know, I think quite a unique design for uh, a two channel um, audio interface. Uh, it's, it's really portable, it's really rugged, you know, it fits. Design is awesome, I think. So it's a two um, preamp input plus two line input. And when you see it like this, you say, oh, that's, you know, fairly standard uh, feature set. But actually, when you open the, the, the cover here, then you realize the amount of features that are packed uh, inside uh, th this little box. And at the back, it's the same. It's completely tied up with hundreds of uh, functions. Maybe not hundreds, but you know, a lot. Let's have a look. So we have um, the Discrete Pro, Arturia Discrete Pro preamps here. Uh, again, one button, one function philosophy. I'll talk a little bit later on the LFU Studio about that. Um, so with the input on the front, we got two phones. Each of them, again, with two different connectors. And at the back, that's where the magic happened. You get so many, you know, such a variety of inputs. So you get two additional line input, two set of speakers. We got a uh, formal uh, input also that switch to the three um, the additional line input. And we got insert on all of the, the two preamps. Digital input, we got ADAT I.O. Spady Fort Clock I.O., MIDI I.O., plus a USB hub. I'll talk about the USB hub a bit later. Right, that was just a quick overview of the AudioFuse Studio. Now, the AudioFuse here. AudioFuse Studio, let me put it here so it's, you can see it properly. So that's the big brother of the original AudioFuse. This is share the same philosophy. And I wanted just to take a minute, man, you know, to tell you, you know, why we made this, you know, why we made the AudioFuse and the AudioFuse Studio. Um, well, you know, mostly, m m I would say, majority of us, you know, we, be it, you know, from professional to hobbyist, um, most of us rely on the computer. And that's great. In a computer, you can do, you know, so many things, like the virtual instruments and all that. Fantastic. But um, there is still function that we miss from the old days, in a way, you know, from the analog mixing console. Um, for example, we miss the variety and the amount of I.O. It's, it's difficult to go in and out of the computer. That's why you need an interface. But what the console was providing also was the variety of I.O., the patch bay, you know, things you could plug in momentarily. That was really useful. Second thing is that um, Usually on the traditional func uh, mixing desk, it's uh, one button equal one function. This is really, you know, maybe difficult to explain. It's actually really important because when you're working, when you're trying to be creative, you don't really want to think where things are. You know, you want to go to NAQ, you want to go to mic gain, you just go for it. You don't think, you know, if your brain has to think about it too much, that's not good. I think it's in the way of the creative process. And the last thing that we miss from the, the you know, classic console is the monitoring section. And for that, I think the computer is not good. You know, it's, uh, you, you, when you're listening to something, looking at your screen, fiddling with this, the mouse or, you know, the pad is not something you can... Um, you can really do easily. And that's why the monitoring section here on all the audio views is something really important in the feature set. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit. So uh, what it is, let we maybe can, you know, dig into it. So we have four mic pre's, Discrete Pro, and I'll take a little more time to talk about them. So we developed that from scratch. It's a uh, discrete technology. And I'm gonna show you just one moment. Here we go. Just about talk a little bit about performances, okay? Because this is important. When you're looking at a mic pre 
for your mic, your line input, instrument input. You want performances because you want to be as you know uh, having much fidelity as you can. So this mic pre's, these inputs here are on par with you know pro audio gear. You have 24 dBU max level. This is broadcast level. Uh, you get also frequency response, you know, ridiculously low, you know, 0.01. A dynamic range, 119 dBA. So dynamic range is difference between your lowest signal and the maximal level that your input can handle. And 119 is huge. I mean, it's, it's, it, you can handle pretty much anything you want in terms of musical signal. And a THD, which is the level of noise on your input. So you want this to be as low as possible because that's the distortion that is induced by all the electronic circuitry you have. So if you want to take care of your mic signal, of your sense output, you know, you want the, the, the interface to, to, to generate as less as, um, as THG as you, you can. And minus 112 dB is, is you know, it's very, very low. It's 0.00025%. That, that's nothing. Okay, um, one thing also is that we have about 70 to 72 dB of gain available on each of these preamps. Uh, to give you just a, a little comparison, most audio interface will go 50, 60 dB. And actually there's one use case which is actually quite interesting to, to, to just to note is uh, some of the most popular mic in broadcast is uh, the uh, Shure SM7. It's a great mic for voiceover, for broadcasting, you know, radio stuff. But the, the problem is having a very low level. So usually what you do is uh, either you have a professional mixing desk that can handle, you know, the amount of gain to bring back this low level to a suitable level for being mixed, or you can insert a small box, which is named Cloudlifter, that will provide an additional amount of gain uh, to your circuitry. That, that, that's working great, but that's an additional box. You know, that's something you need to add to it. Here um, in this uh, AudioFuse and all of the AudioFuse preamp, we have a boost mode, which adds 10 dB of gain by pressing the pad button. You keep it pressed and you go into boost mode that provides this 10 dB uh, of additional gain that doesn't require you to uh, get you know this cloud lifter box or this um, uh, additional box to to improve your signal. So that's something you know quite unique. 72 dB of gain on a USB audio interface. It's fairly rare. I think it's even you know one of the best um, uh, on this parameter. Um, what else could I say about this preamp? I think that's it. Um, also, yeah, really important also is the, the, the level of input noise. So I talk about the distortion. That's the distortion you generate on the signal you record. But also, all electronic has some thermal noise, you know. And you want this to be as low as possible. So also, we, we have on these preamps, you know, it's going as low at 129 dB, minus 129 dB of equivalent input noise. That's really, really low. So you have some of the most um, high fidelity preamps on the market with this Discrete Pro. Um, let's move on now to the output. Uh, output is really important. I'm just going to show you also what we've done. So uh, first of all, talk about the output itself. So speaker output here at the back, we got two sets of them. And when you listen to something in your door, you listen to music, you're mixing, you're working, then you want also the best quality possible on your speaker. Well, the audio fuse and all the audio fuse here achieve that. And you have such a great dynamic range on the speaker output. We can talk a little bit about conversion, actually, on that. We use the latest AKM converter, so it's a Velvet Sound series. Um, very few interfaces use this latest generation. That's why we, we get this result, which are awesome, you know, 121 dBA for um, audio product at this price is probably unique and it's really important you know you want the best quality possible on your monitoring system because that's what you rely on to work to make music 24 dBU again uh, THD 108 very low frequency response flat as possible so that's for the audio part of things and now the control which is really important let me take this one which is actually powered here. 
so we see better. Yeah. So as I said earlier, is that the, the, the problem or the problem you have working into a computer for the monitoring section is something that, you know, for me needs to be addressed. And we, we worked a lot on this. For example, I wanted that, you know, all the control for monitoring session, I can reach them um, even closing my eyes and not looking. Because when you're concentrating on, you know, mixing and checking your sound, maybe you close your eyes, maybe you're, you know, into the music and you don't want to do shift, 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 or, you know, don't find your control. So here, you have all access, stick your hand here, everything is movable, you get access to everything. So we got speaker out, selection here, we've got source selection, so we get up to three different sources on the speaker output. So that's really, seems maybe nothing, but it's actually really important. When you're mixing, you want to hear to your mix, for sure, but you always refer to something. Maybe it's a demo from the musician. Maybe it's a reference track you have. You know, you like this type of music and this particular mix, you want to refer to this. So this is possible using these resources. The sources here can be either the internal mixer of the interface, I'll show it later in the software, but it can be also a particular DO output that you want to listen to. So here I can do ref mix, master mix, ref riff, you know, my, my mixing process. We have all the control also associated with uh, uh, speaker output, so mute, dim, and mono for mono checking. Interestingly enough, we also add this type of control on the phone output. So you have two fully independent phone outputs where you can also independently switch to uh, the source, different sources. Each of them also can have mono check. On the monitoring side, just want also a quick word about the talkback. We got a full talkback here, so it's even have a latch and unlatch if you keep it pressed. Um, really useful also just to speak up with uh, the musician in the room, or outside the room actually. Um, that's all for the monitoring. Let's see a little bit at what we can see here. Uh, I'll actually take this one to show it. Though. Yeah, a bit better. Here we go. So, I talk about the four mic pre's we have on the front. We have the four additional line input at the back, with five and six which can be commuted in phono. Hey, that's another function integrated, okay? We have monitor control, we have four preamps, four line in, we have four, two phono as well. Insert on each of the um, preamps. Um, speaker AB, we talked about it. On the digital side, we have optical uh, I.O. So again, as on the 8 pre, it's double ADAT. So you can uh, keep your 8 channel I.O. in ADAT up to 96K sample rate by using two cables here. We've got SPADIF word clock. So I.O. either word clock or SPADIF here. MIDI I.O. here on mini jack and we provide the small um, uh, adapter. Uh, here we have two additional uh, line output, and I, I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on this because I think it's, a, it's an interesting use case and it's also a quite unique feature to this interface. So this last output is, you know, line output uh, with the same quality you have on the speaker out. So you can basically use it for, you know, sending, I don't know, your monitoring mix to uh, headphone amps if you need more headphones or um, use it to send some signal to uh, external reverb, for example, to do uh, at line level. It has two other functions. Uh, these outputs are DC coupled, which means that you can also control some um, modular synths using, you know, in your door, uh, like in live, the CV tools plugin, which enables you to generate sounds to, to control modular synths but for that, you need DC coupled output because you need to output signals at very, very low frequency. And these are capable for that. So you can directly from your door through the AudioFuse Studio control modular sense. That's a cool feature. And the last one is you can commute this aux output into reamping mode. So what is reamping? I think I, I had a little slide here. Yeah. Just to show you quickly, reamping is the ability to uh, generate some signal from
from your interface at instrument level. And what, why would you need that? Well, if you, for example, are a bit you know, crazy like me, I like to mess up with my guitar amp. Uh, I like to send you know, voice, drum tracks, synths. To do so, uh, you actually need to generate a signal that is compatible with the input of my amp, which is normally um, should um, get only instrument, guitar, or bass level signal. So by commuting this output in reamp mode, you output signal which is fully compatible with any device that you know any gear that is um, receiving normally instrument level. So you have into this unit another function which is kind of DI signal pl splitter which enable you to send the signal to instrument level gear. You can do it live so I can for example record my guitar in the DI, my bass for example directly into the DI and using the, the software control I can route this signal directly into the reamp out so I can also go back to my amp and recall my amp back into the interface. And that's, uh, you can do it live as I said or you can actually record your signal and come back to it later doing the mixing process and use again your amp, your guitar pedal in that purpose. Um, one of the other input I want to talk about also is uh, we have a Bluetooth receiver. So Bluetooth is not really professional audio, okay? When we say about line level, 24 dBU, Bluetooth is, is not about this, but it, hey, it's, it's about the way I think we live music in a way today. You know, we, you come into the studio, you want to check it out, you know, check out this YouTube video I saw, check out, you know, my demo, it's on my phone, check out this Spotify stuff. If you need to do it, well, you can do it in the computer, but it's, if it's from social media, etc., it's not that easy. Here is just one press of the button here, and you get, you know, directly Bluetooth access from any um, audio device, from phone, you know, iPad, etc. It's also cool because we, as we, we develop, actually, let's put it in that way, yeah better. We develop iPad apps, you know, and you can use this like iSpark or uh, small apps we do like this. You can directly um, get the input through this Bluetooth audio receiver here. It supports AAC, APTX, MP3, all the major uh, streaming formats are supported by this uh, high quality Bluetooth uh, receiver. Okay, so um, I think now I cover most of it. I didn't tell you that it was USB-C again. Um, I didn't talk about the USB hub as well. Let's talk uh, one minute about it. USB hub is something, you know, it's not um, a major audio feature, but again, it's the way how to make, you know, your uh, daily studio <laughs> life easier. I never get enough of this, actually. You know, uh, USB hub, you, you have, two or three or four daisy chain, you know, it's a mess. You have iLock, you have whatever controller. So integrating this in the audio fuse, which is, you know, connected to the computer, that's something also which is really, really, really useful. And for the user using already the audio fuse, and they always get back to me and say, oh, you know, it's great interface, great sound, and hey, the hub, it's fantastic. Which seems silly because it's such a small feature but it's actually a feature that is so useful on the daily use uh, for your interface, on your interface. Um, I think I covered most of it. Um, one note, still one note, on the um, Bluetooth. Um, I'll show you in the AudioFuse uh, control center, which is a software. You can actually decide if uh, the, the Bluetooth is accessible, even if the computer is um, is turned off. So this audio interface can work in standalone mode, meaning that when you shut it off or you, you turn down the computer, it keeps all the settings inside. And if I power it up without the computer, it will remain in the same state. So I can use it, you know, as my Bluetooth player, even if the uh, computer is turned off, I can still stream to it and listen to music, you know, in my studio without having a session open. 
or I could even, you know, use the input as it is and listen to the audio without having to, you know, it's like a small mixer, line mixer with a fixed setup. So that's also something that can prove handy. Um, let's go now into the Audio Fuse Control Center. Just to print it quickly. We made it so it's really as simple as it could be. So there's no, there's just one page plus a preference page. Uh, the first row here is all about the input, so it might make the, the different state um, of the inputs. You can see also the digital inputs. That's where you're going to select if you want, for example, to use the phono input here at the back, or you will connect uh, the, the Bluetooth here. You can do it directly here for the Bluetooth. On the middle here, you have the view of the three independent monitoring mixer we have on into inside the interface. So it's really quite simple, really easy to use. You can add, remove tracks for all, any of them, you know, have tracks, stereo, or mono, as you wish. Uh, you can uh, copy mix from one mixer to another. So let's say I'm doing my monitoring mix and then I will provide a slightly different mix for the guitarist next to me, then I will copy the mix, you know, and just uh, update it quickly. And you can also group tracks together. That's also really easy, you know, select group, group track together, and you're done. Um, and then that's the main mix, Q mix one and two. That's the sources you can uh, find here. So if, for example, in Q mix two, I just want to remove everything except, you know, computer series five, six, and I remove everything here. And then when I go to QMix, I will only listen to the USB feed 5 and 6. So again, it's, it's, it's really easy. Um, at the bottom here, you will see all the outputs. So again, here we didn't want to uh, do like a complex matrix view. You know, I really wanted to have a clear view of what was going on in the same page where I'm seeing all my levels, where I'm seeing all my input setup, I wanted also to see all the what's going on on the output and seeing my matrix routing in a way. Not having a different you know, page or something that looks complex for that. So you can see here on the same page all of the outputs and for each of them you can see and choose what source you will route to this output. So again, fairly easy, you can see the speakers, uh, phone one, two, the auxiliary output I talked a lot before, and all the digital output in SPDIF ADAT. One thing to be noticed is the loopback function. So um, AudioFuse 8 Pre and AudioFuse Studio has a um, loopback function. Loopback function is like a virtual output um, that enables you to do all what is necessary for, like example, a YouTuber or streaming audio. So you can share audio from one application to another. Usually, if you don't have this kind of function with your audio interface, you will need to use what we call virtual cable, which can, you know, you can send audio from one application to another. Here, it's inside uh, the audio fuse, and uh, compared to most of the loopback function you can find elsewhere on competition interfaces, this one is integrated inside the hardware, which means that it doesn't, um, it's not related to the platform you're running, your DAW, etc. So it's working both on Mac and PC. That's really important because the loopback function of other audio interfaces that are, um, you know, driven by the driver, then it will usually only work on PC and not on Mac. And those who has experienced this will understand, but it's, it's, it's also a cool feature having the loopback inside the unit. So whatever computer you connect to, and again, it's USB you know, 2, it's class compliant, so it's run on everything, then uh, the loopback function will still be here. Um, and that's it. So um, I can show you yeah, the reamp I'll show you here. Uh, again, when I was saying that you could also send some source from the door, or you can also send some source directly, the input back um, on the, the output here. Um, one, let's have a look here yeah, to the preference. So preference is actually something that is not accessible from the unit, but uh, it's an important place 
uh, because there's a lot of possibilities. Um, and mostly we try to, to be able to answer as many needs you know, we, we could uh, answer to uh, in terms of routing, in terms of configuration. So uh, audio setting page, that's where all the audio stuff is set. We get um, SPDIF choice, so yeah, I didn't tell that, but SPDIF can be either from the coax or can be also generated from the optical cable, so you would decide this. Clock selection, uh, that's also one cool feature and one important point of the audio fuse is that you um, have a lot of possibilities of um, you know, clock source. You can really lock to different type of digital sources, external sources, so you can lock to SPDIF, ADAT or World Clock. And that's, that's, that's a lot of possibilities. And when I'm saying you can lock to speed, if it doesn't mean that the ADAT is not working, you know, you can really lock your, the unit to a certain clock while still having the other digital I.O. depending on the configuration, but you can still have most of the digital I.O. working also at the same time. Sample rate, uh, coax termination, that's when you're using what clock. Uh, listen button, now that's something <laughs> I forgot to mention, there's so many in there, but um, we we put on each of the maybe we can go back here on the on the front panel here. Um, we put on each of the preamp a listen button. So listen button is really when you're say recording a set, small set using your preamps. When you start setting your mic or when you're middle of a recording, it's happened quite often. That's happened. That's really useful on a mixing desk is you want to listen to a single channel. Well, you can do it in the DAW, but maybe if you solo in your DAW, we'll change the mix somewhere else. Having it independently, directly on the hardware is like direct access here. I listen to this channel, okay? And listens come into two modes that you will set here um, in the preferences. It's the listen will work either in solo or in PFL. The first PFL is pre-fader listen. It's a function that will enable you to listen to the signal um, before entering the digital domain or before going into the monitoring mix. So what I'm listening here is the direct output, mono output of the preamp. So I can really just directly check out. And even if this track is muted in my mixer because I don't want to monitor it normally, but I'm still recording it, then I can have direct access to this uh, track here. And solo is a bit different. It gives access to the solo with of the given mixer. So let's say I select here the main mixer. I'm having my channel one, two, three here. Then if I'm pressing solo on these tracks, I can solo the tracks within the mixer. So when I do that, I take into account the pads, the grouping, the mute, you know, the levels. So I have a, a clear monitoring direct access to monitor what's actually going on inside my mixer. Okay, I don't know any other interface who does that. I think it's, it's, it's actually really important to, again, having a direct access to this type of control function. It's the same as the monitoring section. You don't want to be thinking about this stuff because if you hear something, you need quick access because no, no, something is rattling or you have a microphone you know, buzzing or something. If middle of a recording, you want to access it directly, that's really important. Um, let's go back to the preference here. Um, ground lift on the aux uh, reamp, I didn't talk about it, but that's a small feature. And here we have the speaker um, management system. So because we have two set of output, you can decide if you want the output level uh, for each of them to be completely independent, or if I move one of the speaker level here, I want to be replicated or with a trim on the speaker B output. So that's decided here alongside setting out also the value of the dim here. Talkback, we get also different options, especially where you want to route your talkback, because maybe you don't want everyone to receive the signal, so you can do that here. And Bluetooth routing, that's what I was telling just before. Either it's an exclusive mode, so this mode is means that whatever I'm listening to or I'm doing with the interface, if I press this Bluetooth button, it will output on every monitoring, so both speaker and the two phones, it will output the Bluetooth receiver. So that's really handy if you want, even the computer is closed down and you're in this mode, 
you just want to listen to some music in your studio, just press the button, you will hear the music on the speaker and the phone. If you select input channel 7 and 8, then the Bluetooth will be routed in channel 7 and 8 and will be considered as any other uh, uh, input of your audio interface. So then you need probably to route it to your DAW if you want to record it, or if you want to monitor it, you need to set your monitoring mix um, to hear it as any you know, uh, audio input in the interface. Um, I think I covered most of it right now. Uh, anyway, if you have any question, we can answer them later on. Uh, some little thing I didn't note, I didn't talk about is the latency. So this is USB 2 audio. So we go down to uh, values around three milliseconds for 32 samples at 48k and uh, 96k. It's so around you know slightly under three milliseconds for analog ground chip. So I mean going into the analog input into the computer back to the speaker output, for example. So slightly under um, 3 milliseconds and 96k, and uh, uh, more around 4 milliseconds when you are at 48k. You got the figures and, um, on a website. I can provide it later on if you want. Um, I think I covered everything. I think it's time now to maybe have a look and a listen to all the plugins that are um, provided with the each of the audio fuse. So let me just show you this. Yes, so Audio Fuse Creative Suite is an exclusive bundle of Arturia software provided with every audio fuse. Even if you bought your audio fuse two years ago, the first one, the two channel one, then you're still entitled and we'll try and we make sure that we update this bundle regularly, adding new software on the go. Um, for Christmas, or just after Christmas, for NAM, we added uh, the plate reverb to the bundle, and we'll add more in the coming. So it's like subscribing to you know, a special club, <laughs> Arturia Software Club, uh, this Audio Fuse Creative Suite, and you will keep having new software coming in. So for now, we're having three preamps. So one based on the Neve, one based on Trident A, one based on the Telefunken. So all three different sound technology. We'll listen to it later on. We have one compressor based on the Uray 1176, one tape echo, and the plate reverb. And on plus of that, you get the analog lab light, which give you, you know, the best access possible to uh, your entire uh, virtual instrument collection. So that's a lot of value we provide with every audio interface. Now, now, if you allow me, let's have a look. I prepared a very you know, few track session. I wanted to show you a bit each of them and see their different character and uh, uh, just you know, mess up a little bit with them just to give you some examples. So maybe let's just check my level good. Yes. Right. So. Here I'm only using, okay, it's everything at zero dB. It's a quick balance. I'm only using the, the, the plugins I show you. So first of all, here on bass, I put the Trident. So Trident is fantastic. It um, has this unique EQ, okay? It has a silk, uh, silky high end, which is fairly unique. And its architecture on the original and in this recreation is that every AQ band interact in terms of phase. Uh, so you get this special, it's kind of messing around. You don't know exactly what it's doing on your face, but it's so musical. It's great. It's, it's, it's really a unique, uh, uh, the Trident uh, console were used, um, you know, in the 70s on, on a lot of record. It's a unique channel strip. So here I'm only using it. Let's listen to the bass, bass only. That's the original sound. So I'm only using it here to emphasize a little bit the, the mid-range, so it gave a little bit more peps, you know, popping a little bit more. Same with help. Right. Easy to use, quite unique. Let's listen to the drum. So drums, I'm using the Neve. Fantastic preamps, you know, everyone knows this, you know, classic sound. Here I'm using it just to give a little bit more 
harshness, a little bit more, you know, brightness and a little bit bottom as well. Okay, a bit more in your face. And here, on the top of that, I'm adding the FET compressor. So this one is a recreation, um, recreation of a famous compressor, probably the most recreate compressor as a plugin actually. And when we decided to do compressor like a year and a half ago, um, we wanted to do that one also because it was a good way to judge ourselves against the competition in a way. And we're really proud of this one. I really invite you to check it out if you don't own it already. Um, it's provided with every audio fuse and it's probably one of the best recreation of this famous uh, comp. And not only it's a recreation of the classic settings, but we added a lot of features that are quite unique. So if you press here, you see this, and it's the same on most of our plugins. It's like we do, you know, the original, the classic recreation as best as we can to, you know, recreate this character and the original feel to it. But we also add this a lot of features that extend the use for this compressor. On this one, so we added, you know, AQ on the side chain. You can actually look ahead or delay the side chain detection. You can use it dual, you know, mono, stereo, MS, so it's only compressing the mid side. You know, I won't go on all these details. Maybe we'll do a new video on all the plugins, but uh, to go deeply into it. But uh, a lot of feature set that enables you to, to reach, uh, you know, uh, cool sounds in, in, in a fun way. So on this one, what I wanted to do is to really uh, live up a little bit the track, you know, make it more um, yeah, vibey, I guess. So I'm using the all button, and so on the original, you could press all the ratio button together, so we kept that for sure. And it had this special sound, so I'm listening to the sound itself here. Right, so you can hear it, it's like, Compressing was mad. It's a unique sound for this compressor we recreated. And the interesting thing is adding here the parallel, uh, uh, the ability to mix a dry signal with this, you know, over compressed signal in this specific mode. Then I, I'm getting, I think, a good um, vibey thing. So if you listen to the off bit, A little bit of it will make it more jumpy, even I can go a bit faster on the, the release. So it's bringing back the ambience, the atmosphere of the drum, so that's the way I use it. Again, you know, short example, we need more work on this, it, I just try to illustrate what we could do with each of them. So here on the road, I, I decided to use the third preamp we offer with the audio fuse is the Pre-V76, so it's based on the Telefunken tube. Again, you'll see lush tube sound, you can get this nice saturation if you, you know, go quite hard into it. But we also added this MS mode, so here what I wanted to do is quite open up more the road sound. So here are the sounds of the road without, you know, the plug-in. And now it emphasizes the movement. And I just do this by adding more saturation, you know, distortion on the side of the signal without it. So again, you know, it's almost a one knob preamp, just adding a bit of this, you know, gooey color. I know people who would add, you know, all of this on every track so you get all this tube fill and everything. You know, everything is possible here. That's what I wanted to achieve here. Um, also, well, the tape, I think I just messed around with that one. I added it on the road. Let's listen to it, yeah. So without it, and with it, you can hear a little delay. Actually, if I'm pushing it hard, it's like messing completely around, yeah. But I like it, you know, it's a bit, distorted, delay, messy thing that makes something at low level quite nice. That's it. And then, just to show it a bit, this plate reverb, that's 
you know, good example of how you know simple a plugin can be. Plate reverb is in the real life is actually so simple. It's just you know huge lever. You can change a bit the the decay time on it uh, mechanically. But here we we added different models. We we created our own plate models beside the classic sound. We added this distortion drive tube drive to it, so you can get a nice effect on also on it. And here in this track, you know, it's it's really easy reverb. That's my go-to reverb when I just want, you know, add nice tail, this nice smooth way, you know, just open it and just apply a bit of it. And here on this example, you know. So I don't know if you hear, it's really a dry sound. And now adding the reverb. It's easy, okay. And then, just for fun, I added the Neve on the master. Didn't touch the AQ at all. Just pushing a bit hard inside the the preamp to get this, you know. So this is actually really subtle. I don't know. I hope you'll be able to listen carefully through the streaming. But it's just adding a bit of vibe and you know, little saturation. So that's it. So if we listen to all of this with no Arturia plugin on it, so that's the original balance, everything at zero. That's with the Arturia plugin. So it's no big, you know, radical transformation, just adding up a bit of stuff, you know, um, little change on each of the track using this plugin. So you can really be subtle or you can go hard for it, you know, and, and mess up a lot with the sound. Um, just to finish on this little session, I wanted, uh, actually, initially I planned to do a reamp demonstration here um, in, in the studio, but my old Fender amp is so noisy, it's like buzzing in my ears, and I think you would have hear all this buzz during all the presentation would have been reasonable. So I just recorded it um, using the reamp function just to show you uh, actually something important is what you know you really need to have the reamp function to send signal um, into an amplifier or any guitar related product. So I. I'll let you hear. So what I did actually, it's like you know, it's a bit silly, but I just put the drums through it because this has like a nice mono um, vintage um, uh, spring reverb. You know, it's it's a small one. It's it's a Fender Blues Junior. It's a, it's a small amp, but um, I, I like the, the the reverb and also adding a bit of distortion from the amp. And I try just you know mess around. It's the um, the drum track. So th here we go. Right. And listen carefully now. This has been recorded using the um, using the reamp output. So what I did is I routed my drum track to the aux output, put the aux output into reamp mode, feed the 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 amp, and put a mic and record it back through the um, the unit here. So that's what we have. Now I'm going to use it with no reamp. And I did exactly the same setting, she didn't change anything. That's what we have with no reamps. So I'm going to switch between two reamp, no reamp. So what I don't know what you can hear, but what I can hear here is that the, with our reamp, the tone is really changing. It's like more harsh, and I lose some of the bass or medium bass uh, frequencies. And and with reamp, the sound is more you know like compact in in one block. So it's just showing up that you know that if you are directly feeding any you know amplifier in line, it will work. You know, it's not even a, a, a problem of level. But because you don't have it, this matching impedance and in this reamp mode, then you you are altering you know the the sound of it. So that's why it's you know if you like to you know play around with some 
hardware, uh, be it uh, AMP or you know whatever you have at hand. Actually, it's, it's I, I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. Besides using the plugins, uh, I think it, it's a really nice feature to have. And so you have this on the AudioFuse Studio and the original AudioFuse. You can hear it uh, inside the track. Um, what I did actually with the reamp version. So just. Without it, I think it's just adding a little bit, even less we could progress. Again, you know, I'm just having fun with it, but you can see, you know, the point is that um, using the AudioFuse Studio, y you have, you know, fantastic plugins to play around on your audio. But it connectivity and the ability to route signal, you know, in different direction and and to different format enables you to do that kind of uh, uh, experiment, which I think you know it's 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 it's, it's cool. Uh, and at least I encourage you to you know to to try that kind of things with with our audio shoes. Um, okay, well I think I've I'm 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 mostly done uh, for now. Um, just. A quick word again as a summary on the AudioFuse Studio. So it's a 18 input, 20 output uh, feature pack USB audio interface. It has, you know, one of the most comprehensive monitor controller um, with all accessible and, you know, hands-on control. Um, you get DI reamp capability, DC coupled output to control modular synths. You get some of the best preamp out there, and honestly, you know, I show you figures. Um, um, it figures, you know, sometimes you know, it doesn't mean much. And the best thing to try is you know, to plug like a ribbon mic with really low level SM7 to see what you know you can get with 72 dB, 70 dB of gain, or with such a low uh, noise input on any you know string recording or delicate sound, delicate synths. Um, you'll see, you need to try it, really. Um, Bluetooth audio receiver, you know, that's... Uh, it's not about, you know, making music, but it's like, it's like the USB hub. It's, it's things that you... It will change the way, you know, you just interact and feel in the studio just by this little feature set. You know, listen, USB hub, um, the Bluetooth receiver, that kind of stuff, I think, that makes the AudioFuse Studio unique. And that's prospect. And again, you know, um, the audio fuse creative suite. So it will evolve with time. It's exclusive. You know, it's not free giveaway. You find everywhere. This is only Arturia Soft, and it, and we'll keep adding to it. So it's you know, it's a serious software here. Um, okay. So now you know. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Um, if you know, we can see if you have any question for it, you know, if I can help with, um, I will do. Uh, let's see what we have. How's the weight of the A Studio? Don't have a cover chassis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the weight of the A Studio is actually quite sturdy, okay? It's, it's metal um, on the side, ABS on the top. It's, uh, quite, it's, it's quite heavy. It's, it's, you know, it feels really solid. And um, we actually spent a lot of prototyping trying to add a cover as on the small audio fuse, which is, I think, you know, like crazy design here. Uh, you know, it's, it fits, you know, it's, it's fairly unique. We try to do the same uh, here on the, um, on the audio fuse studio, but the size of it was like not getting, in, you know, not getting the thing. So we, what we did is actually tried the profile of it so you don't have, in, you know, knobs ticking too much. Um, so you can easily, you know, carry it. If that's your question, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to carry. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have a cover. Um, yeah, okay, well, I think that's all. Did I cover everything? I'm surprised. I probably missed some stuff. Um, but hey, it was clear enough. That's, that, that's, that's perfect. That's cool. Anyway, if you, you, know, if, uh, you have other questions, you know, just fill in the chat. We'll check them out you know, um, later on. You can also address you know, questions to support at arturia.com. 
um, they will forward with to me if you want you have any question that's cool um, you know um, if you need uh, more information also check out the links below the the video okay um, and you know thank you thank you so much for attending this presentation stay safe make music and have a good day bye bye